Hello there, I am Jacqueline Steele and this is part three in a five part series. It is my story, it is my personal story, and it is the setup and the reason that I wrote my single Didn't Break Me and also the ebook Didn't Break Me. So without further ado, welcome to Adult Story Time. This is part three and it is entitled The Part Where I Went to the Middle East. I compartmentalized as best as I could. I took the pressure of releasing the other two songs I had recorded off my plate and decided to focus my time on wrapping up remaining client work, writing the last few blog posts for the year, and finishing the online course I was going to release in January called Start Strong. I crawled into Christmas break, but I was so proud of myself. I gave every ounce I had left to my work and I was elated to be done. I spent that off week like a hermit in my house, watching Netflix and reading and spending some quality time with my husband and my animals. It was so nice. Then on January 28th, I packed my bags and left for Dubai. I'll never forget watching my husband watch me as I inched my way along in the security line. He didn't budge until I was completely out of sight and something deep inside of me screamed that I should be walking out with him. In the moment, I chalked it up to fear. After all, I was a woman traveling alone to the Middle East, but my sense of adventure won out over my fear. It usually does. And I kept moving. I'm not someone who lives in a state of fear, and I never have been. I went solo skydiving at 16. In 2005, at 18 years old, I went to London with a girlfriend right after the bombings happened. And just a few weeks ago at a gas station, and I don't recommend this, but I did it, I instinctively inserted myself to defuse a potentially harmful situation when I saw a young man reach into his car for his brass knuckles as an, uh, another young guy approached him. I'm no superwoman, but I'm also no damsel in distress. I had been planning this trip with my friend for almost a year. She was my neighbor when Sam and I lived in California, and she even lived with us for a brief period when she had fallen on hard times. She moved to Dubai shortly after Sam and I migrated to Georgia, and I felt quite certain that she could be trusted. We had been friends for six years. Sam, on the other hand, did not trust her and did not love the idea of me traveling with her in the United Arab Emirates and Oman for two weeks. She had displayed some odd behavior in the past, yes, but still I wanted to go. My major in college was international studies with an emphasis in Middle East studies, and I was jonesing to walk on this ancient ground that I had only read about. I also, after everything that had happened in the previous few months, felt like I needed a vacation. I boarded the plane, and before I knew it, I was grabbing a café au lait en Paris before catching another flight to the UAE. It was a long trip, but it was uneventful. Not at all like what I was about to walk into. As soon as I arrived at her apartment, I knew something was wrong. She was vacant. She didn't seem at all like herself, and there were prescription bottles on her countertop. I gently asked her what was going on, and without totally spilling her beans, she confessed that she was going through a really tough time. Her relationship with her boyfriend, the one she had moved to Dubai to be near, was on the rocks and things at her university weren't going well. At that moment, within an hour of arriving, it was clear I had stepped into something I didn't have the energy to step into. But what was I to do? I was 7,600 miles away from home. So I decided to lean in. She needed a friend now more than ever, and I could be that. I could be a shoulder to cry on and someone to hold space for her during this really tough time. And that's what good friends do, right? <sighs> the first couple of days were fine. I had crazy jet lag and was waking up at really weird hours, but we had fun. She told me how grateful she was to have someone around to get her mind off of her relationship, and I had hope that we would get through this and make the best out of a bum situation. Then on New Year's Day, there was a shift. Her boyfriend of three years, who had moved her to Dubai and supported her and taken her all over the world, broke up with her in a text message. 
there was some other seriously crazy ish that I found out that day, but none of that is my story to tell. What is my story to tell is that her behavior became increasingly erratic after that. At first, it was lost apartment keys and elevator cards and, oh my gosh, I left my passport at the visa office. Then, while visiting a mosque in Abu Dhabi, it became, do you have an internet connection? I don't have one in this underground parking garage and I can't open up my Tesla app and without the Tesla app, we can't open the car because I lost the key. Then it became angry, high-speed driving in a city that uses traffic lights and lines as a polite suggestion. Then it got really weird right after we arrived in Muscat, Oman for the weekend and we went through customs and her passport was suddenly gone. She had had my passport a few moments prior and I politely extracted it from her fingers. Then it got next level crazy on our second day in Muscat when her anger and frustration rocketed toward me over whether we were on the Persian Gulf or the Sea of Oman. We had barely woken up and she said the Persian Gulf and I politely disagreed and all hell broke king loose. (sighs) Sitting in that hotel room in Muscat, listening to her yell at me was surreal. She was screaming over a disagreement about a body of water on the map. There was no reasoning behind it, none. I knew somewhere inside this outburst really wasn't about me, but still it was directed at me and she was burning with rage. I just remember saying in earnest, are you fucking serious? Then as quickly as she lit up, she suddenly left for a massage. She told me that I could take the rental car and travel around Muscat on my own that day because she had no interest in being friends anymore. I sat on my twin bed in that hotel room, stunned. I hadn't even had coffee yet. I was so confused. I started looking at options for changing my flight so that I could get home as soon as possible, but the cost was astronomical. Hours passed. I didn't know what to do. I started getting worried about her. I texted, no reply. I texted again. No reply. I texted again. She finally replied that she hadn't been near her phone, but that she was on her way back. I hoped we could reconcile and pull this trip out of the bag, but it got worse. Everything was my fault. Everything. I was berated again and blamed for making her angry. It was such a long berating that I put my phone recorder on as proof. And I know that that's a little naughty, but I didn't think anyone would believe me that this was happening. It was too bizarre. I called my husband in the middle of the night crying. He told me to come home. I told him I couldn't do anything until I got back to Dubai where the rest of my belongings were. 24 hours or so after our initial fight, she had cooled off and decided that we could start over. Lucky me. I didn't believe her, but I was willing to do anything to get back to Dubai in one piece. The following day was eventful. I won't bore you with all the details of everything we did before we were due at the airport because we missed every tour that we were supposed to go on, but it is worth noting that we got lost in the middle of the desert at dusk. Her GPS had stopped working, but she wanted to see this waterfall in the dark, and she was certain she would remember the way back in a country that she had never visited before. My pits are re-sweating just thinking about this. I berated myself for getting in the car with her that day, but I knew that the full berating and self-loathing would have to wait until I was safe. I kept silently repeating, just get to the airport, Jacqueline, just get to the airport. Also, the irony is not lost on me that I felt more in danger in her presence than I did anywhere else we had been in the Middle East so far. Cue Alanis Morissette on Jagged Little Pill singing, isn't it ironic, don't you think? After several hours of driving and me sweating, we pulled up to the airport entrance and I kissed the ground. Not literally, but in my head, it was a full on snog with the concrete. To make a long few hours short, she ended up being detained in Muscat. No passport, 
no plane. And it didn't help that she was blaming the police for not helping her enough. I sat in awe on the tarmac as she was texting me to have a good time in Dubai. And I'll let you know what they say, but I'll probably be here for a few more days. The plane engine started rumbling and I felt a dichotomous sense of freedom and dread wash over me. What the hell was I going to do next? And then, <laughs>